Now that we have a stage to mark the completed items in the queue as completed, we also need another stage to mark the exception items as exception. Currently, if an exception occurs in any of the stages inside this currency converter page, the exception will bubble up to the main page and then it will be caught by this recover stage which eventually goes to the end. Which means no further items will be processed. We don't want to end the process just because one item failed. Instead, we want to mark that item as an exception and continue processing the rest of the items. So we will add another recover stage here. Then add a calc stage and we will use this to update the exception detail to the data item ED. As we did earlier, double click. I'll name it as update exception. Then drag and drop exception detail into the expression. And ED into store result field. Then click OK. Then we will add a resume stage. Now we will add an action stage. Double click. Name it as mark exception. Select the business object work queues and the action mark exception. Drag and drop item ID here and ED for exception reason. We will leave the other two inputs and the output as blank for now. Then click OK. Now we need to link mark exception stage to the get next item stage. So we will delete this link, move mark completed down, add an anchor, and then connect the links. Then we will enclose the currency converter stage and the recover to stage inside a block so that the exception from the currency converter stage is caught only by the recovers to stage. Now we will open the currency exercise file, clear the values in the INR column and save the Excel. Then we will go to the control room and select currency queue and you can see that the item which was logged in our previous video is now set as exception. Oh, by the way, in the last video, I said this is the status column. I apologize, I was wrong. The status column is actually the fourth column here which says status. And we'll talk about that later. The first column really doesn't have a label as such. We can simply call it as a flag column. Anyway, we see that the locked item is now showing exception. And if I scroll to the right, you can see that the exception reason says automatically set exception at cleanup. So basically when a process completes the run, Blue Prism will automatically set the locked items to exception as a part of its cleanup activity. All right, now we will clear the queue by selecting both items, right click and click delete worked cases from selection. Now our queue is clear. Now we will go back to the process studio and set a breakpoint on get next item. So we have two items in the currency exercise Excel file. We will allow the first item to complete successfully. And for the second item, we will deliberately cause an exception so that we can see how the mark exception stage works. So I will click go. And the breakpoint has reached. You can see the XE currency converter is launched. And if you go to the control room, refresh, the queue is loaded. Now I'll keep stepping until it reaches the get next item. Okay, so the first item was completed successfully and it is marked completed. Now before it gets the next item, I'll go to Internet Explorer and I'll just click this link so that it navigates to a different page. And here we don't have those three input fields. So now if I go back and start stepping, we can see that at the currency converter stage an exception occurred which is caught by the recover to stage. If I continue stepping, you can see that the process will update the exception, resume the process, mark exception in the queue, and returns to get next item and we reach the breakpoint. Now if I go back to the control room and refresh, you can see that the last item is marked exception. If I scroll to the right and expand the exception reason, 
you can see the error failed to perform step one in right stage enter input value on page enter input value no elements match the supplied query terms which basically means it could not find the input value field which is because we navigated to a different page all right so I'll go back to the process studio and let the process to complete by clicking on go Now if I open the currency exercise file, you can see that only one value is filled. I'll clear that and save the Excel. Let's go back to the control room again. If you remember in the last video, I mentioned that none of the fields here show any information related to the item's data. Now this makes it difficult for us to figure out which item has failed in case of there is an exception. That's where this item key comes into picture. The item key can display any column from the Excel file with which you can identify which item is being processed or has been processed. So if I open this Excel file, you have two columns here apart from the INR, currency and amount. If you configure the currency column as the item key, then it will display these values USD and AAD under the item key in the queue. Similarly, if you configure the amount column, it will display the values 55 and 140 under the item key. But these values will not be unique. There can be some other entry with USD or AED as the currency and there can be some other record with the values 55 or 140. So we need something unique and for that we will add one more column and name it as S number which stands for serial number or something. Then I'll fill the values in sequence. I'll then save the file, close it. And next I need to configure the S number column as item key. So I'll go to system, work queues, and select currency queue. Here you can see a field called key name. I'll enter our item key here, which is S number, then click apply. And now if we go to the process studio and start the process, the breakpoint reached. And if we go to the control room, refresh and check currency queue, you can see that the two new items have the item key which we set. Now if I step, the get next item stage is executed and if I go to the control room, refresh, you can see that the item with the key one has got the lock and it is on the top of the queue. All right, I will reset the process to stop it. And if I go to the control room, refresh, you can see that the locked item is marked automatically as exception. However, the pending item is still in pending status. So I hope by now you have a fair understanding of how the queue works. In the next video, we will talk about configuring the queue to retry exception items.